Hi Aries Moons, thank you so much for being here. I am Divine Femme Care 144. Very happy, grateful, and blessed to bring you this reading. This reading is designed for those who have their moon sign in the zodiac sign of Aries, unlimited to anyone who should find this message or should this message find you. For this reading, I will be doing a three card spread, past, present, and future using the Melanated Classic Tarot deck. I will clarify those three cards using the Egyptian Tarot deck. And then at the end of this reading, I will do a overall card using the Major Arcana from the Golden Tarot deck. I've already pre-shuffled all three decks. I'm going to shuffle the first deck a few more times and split the deck and we will get started. With the lovely background here, we are giving honor, recognition, and thanks to those who have their moon sign and the wonderful sign of Taurus as they are in the Spotlight series for this round of readings for all 13 zodiac signs. This is a wonderful time to connect with the earth, to be as grounded as possible as we move forward in life, living our best lives, to embrace our surroundings, and to be in a state of gratitude and appreciation for what it is that we do have, taking time to smell the flowers, and see the beauty that is all around us, but then also within us here too as well. Taking deep pleasure in the sensualities of life too as well. And um, recognizing and realizing what those truly are and what they mean to us in our lives. With the fruit cocktail that's present here, I was channeling this for some of you, not all of you. Some of you may have a childhood connection when it comes to fruit cocktail and this being a part of your meal consistently to where you did not like it. And so as I was getting this ready, I realized that there were no cherries in here either. Um, and I was a little bummed about it at first, but then I thought about it and it's like, um, maybe this was manifested by the person or people that I'm channeling this from where you picked out the cherries because that was your least favorite part. And so we have here fruit cocktail with no cherries and then also candy that I just channeled as a, I feel a part of this Taurus moon energy. You're taking delight in those comforts and sweets and going back to some childhood candies possibly too and really enjoying that. But then also in moderation, balancing this out with the nutrients that are necessary for you to uh, keep yourself stabilized and to maintain and to be able to manifest. All right, Aries Moon, so I'm gonna leave this here. Your past card position, we have the tower. So something significant that has um, come into your life, come into play. This could also be connected to someone you're connecting to here too as well, as I'm seeing two people. So two people coming out of a tower energy here. For some of you, I'm getting this being a reflective force here after some attempt was made to um, disturb your peace or your happiness. And that deflection being very instant and creating a tower moment for whoever was sending whatever kind of energy that was unnecessary your way. This could also be um, about a breakdown of a structure, something that was built on unstable foundation here, seeing the coldness and the ice, where more of that warmth and that fire is coming from the top. And I do feel that the energy of that warmth is um, speaking to the imbalance with it being up here rather than being at the supportive base here. As heat rises. And so um, with that being said, we do have an overall energy of 16 that's breaking down to a seven, seventh house energy coming through with Libra. I do feel this is also speaking to polarity energy with the Taurus energy, polarity energy is Scorpio. And then your polarity energy is present here in this tower card. So you, I feel doing some shadow work, experiencing some kind of shadow energy along your journey and working through this, I do feel very successfully, but this also being divine intervention for a lot of you where this is deflective energy and just a waking up process that's taking place for some people that you're connected to who tried it. Um, ego death here too is what I'm hearing as well. A 
and your uh, your excuse me your present card. We have the Nine of Swords, and I'm not getting this as being you. Maybe that's why. Almost like um, you prepared yourself for a show with your intuitiveness that's coming through and that seven energy and the importance of that Libra energy within yourself, the shadow work. I feel this is something that was prepared. I'm seeing, cause the dark energy, the night energy stuck out more than this energy that's all down here. And then we have more of this night energy that's present here. So for some of you that could be a significant connection there, I'm not really picking up a whole lot on that. It's just um, very poignant. So with the nine energy, this is about completions. I'm again, not getting this as being you. I feel that you are in observation. That being a part of that seven energy too with the chariot energy where the chariot could be about movement, but it's also a seven energy where it's time to kind of sit still and watch and observe to take everything in that energy from Taurus moon. So you are assisting yourself with this already, having this in your past position and now this being in the present, where I feel with the tower moment that's come in and changes being made after a certain foundation is brought down here by divine intervention. Um, with that tower coming in, I do feel that this is a part of some kind of reflection here. But we do have an eight energy in between this overall breakdown of a seven and then a nine here. Eights being about abundance, but then also eighth house energy of Scorpio. So with this uh, darker energy that's coming through, that black energy could be in reference to a darker shadowy energy. As the Libra energy is your shadow energy. So experiencing a shadow connection... Um, I was also going to say with the polarity energy of first house and seventh house, that being a connection there too. So whatever your seventh house placement is, um, that's connected to your rising sign. The seventh house energy being a descendant energy for you. So if you're not too um, sure about that, I would look into that. And if you are and you know what those placements are, I do feel strongly those placements um, having something to do very strongly with. The two cards that are present here where I am getting this being someone connected to you. So Nine of Swords is about um, being in one's head, feeling a certain way. This could be about anxiety. This could be about depression. This could be um, nightmares, having bad dreams, dark night of the soul energy. This is a part of um, dark night of the soul energy especially with the nine of wands tied to the tower energy is what I'm getting. Having done something, made a choice about something with the six energy being right before this breakdown of a seven. Six is um, the lover's card and the major arcana is a six energy. And also with the 15, the card of 15 being after the temperance card and the major arcana, that's being... The devil energy where the 15 adds up to a six. So another six energy there. I feel that being about that choice when it comes to unconditional love. And in making a choice with the two energy, two of wands coming through. A tower moment came in. Divine just assisting. The universe is assisting any choices to help us for our greatest good. And so this being a part of the process here. And it's not easy, not easy, but coming into greater spirituality here and pure, uh, pure state, moving away from any toxicity and moving into a 10 of swords here. I feel maybe having a knowing here too about a 10 of swords and not being able to sleep at night because of that too as well. Pink energy is Libra here too as well. So that also being tied with the overall breakdown of the seven energy that's here. Decorative energy could be important here too as well. Art, seeing the blanket, and then just the matching.
This could be about an awakening here too, coming into a completion, moving through uh, energy of the swords. That's more on a um, lower vibration, moving into higher vibration. That going back to the dark night of the soul energy. Being forced to face the choices that one has made where these swords could be about untruths. Your future card. We have is the Knight of Wands. Knight energy is usually about defending. And what I'm getting is that this is about this person here and what is happening for this person um, because they're in a Knight of Wands. So with the past, present, and future energy, I feel that, and this has kind of been happening the last few readings, the masculines, divine masculines are coming into greater strength along with the feminines, but I feel that the focus is now more on the masculine energies because the feminines, it's that sitting pretty energy and the high priestess, moving from that high priestess and increasing that knowledge and that wisdom and that intuitiveness, going through a certain cycle where you, with this tower connected to you, I feel this has brought an increase for you from the level that you are already at. And this creating a newer level, moving away, I feel, from a Knight of Wands here for a masculine energy. So for a lot of you feminines, if um, you know this is resonating in that way, this is a masculine energy that's communicating or spirit's way of letting you know what's happening with the tower moment um, that may have just taken place But again, you having the overall knowing, sitting pretty in that Empress energy, being confident of who it is that you are and who it is that you're connected to and knowing that um, this is going to be taking place here and who it is that you're dealing with. I feel with the shadow energy from past experience, You may have been okay with this. I feel you're not okay with the energy that you've been dealing with and that being a reason for this tower coming in here too as well because you've taken a stand. That seven energy coming through also has a seven of wands energy with that taking a stand. So um, I feel um, with one being in one's head here and this being tied to this energy coming after There may automatically just be some um, reaction rather than a response. And that being about the energy of a knight presence here and working through this to be able to move into king status where kings are making more of a response. And that being connected to emperor energy, your energy overall. And that's where that balance energy is coming through there too as well. I feel you've come in a strong balance within yourself with the Empress and the Emperor energy. And now the masculine energy for you feminines um, are moving through this, following along, I feel, with what you've already experienced and that being the reason also to you having a knowing. This is more of your energy here. Where I am getting that working of the shadow energy and now you coming out of that. And again, this being passed on, this energy to help assist a masculine energy. Fire energy, Aries, Leo, Sagittarius, and a Fucus. And this could be someone from your past here too with them facing a past position here. And I'm not, again, I'm not really getting um, this being really that intense of a past, present, and future reading. I'm getting this being the story of who it is that you're connected to and what's happening gradually with the past, present, and future energy here. And the uncovering is what I'm getting here in the future. Like the future energy having the energy of the moon energy and the uncovering of secrets. 
maybe possibly receiving, I feel on the upside of a Nine of Swords energy, you receiving some kind of communication, whether that be through dreams, telepathic energy, or your heightened spirituality and the downloads you receive, information about who it is you've been connecting to. Going through a dark night of the soul after having made some choices connected to a Knight of Wands energy. We're on a lower vibration that could be about in and out behavior, irresponsible behavior. Having a lot of partners, the untruths being connected to those nine swords there too. And the wand energy coming through. Um, as symbology related to sex and sexual activity. Um, but the energy coming through here too. So feeling like one has it all. But with the night energy, um, being more in defensive mode of the element here. Not really taking all things into consideration and that being a part of the growth that one is coming into with the dark night of the soul here. So this again being more about a story here. We're going to move into the clarifying cards here. And I feel with that knowing too, you have an understanding of this as you were able to predict this coming through here. Having already gone through something similar yourself. For you feminines, now if this is you masculines here, you're definitely um, expressing yourself and what it is that you're going through. Where there may have been some concealment with the seven energy and a seven of swords. That just being about you not really sharing the truth. And that being a part of the untruths coming through here. So we'll clarify the tower card. And this is falling right over in between the Nine of Swords and the Knight of Wands. Illumination. And I'm. this is the happiest card of the deck. But I'm not getting that here. I'm getting this being about illumination. With illumination, a tower comes in. Divine intervention coming through. Both very strong energies in the sky. The sun and then the warmth. The fire being up top. And the lightning connecting to that energy there too as well. Very electric energy that's bringing down a structure that was built on unstable foundation. So that's mainly what I'm getting. There's not too much more to say on that. Um, with this being a card of 19, that breaking down to an overall one, speaking to a new beginning that is set to come in with this tower energy and the movement um, through uh, one's particular cycle and a part of one's journey here. That's all designed to help with some enlightenment overall with that sun energy there too as well. This is Leo energy here too, with the sun. So we have the energy of you here being present with this reading, but then your energy also, I feel as a reflection, working on that shadow energy of your seventh house energy of Libra. And not necessarily your seventh house energy, overall the seventh house energy of Libra, I should, I, I should say. Um, because you all have different rising signs in your first house. With the Leo energy that's there, that lower vibrational energy of Leo, seeing the crown here coming off of the top of the tower, that tied to the ego death that was coming through. A humbling experience here, helping with that reflection on the untruths and the choices from a Knight of Wands. Illumination. Rebirth, part of a rebirth here too as well. With the 13 coming right before the, um, the 13 of the death card coming right before the 14 of the temperance, which is before the devil card of 15. And that purity energy coming through here with the white. The cleansing that's coming through with this breaking down of the structure there. It just may have been blocking the sun. And I do feel that with towers that are built on stable foundation, 
There's no blocking of anything because it's built in a way that's going to be supported by the sun and, you know, whatever components of the universe are necessary because of the way that it's built and how it's built. And I feel that's um, speaking to this energy there too with the fire at the top. The sun just being blocked and the energy that's coming from this is more of a fire energy. I feel is a part of that cleansing energy to bring this tower down to help these individuals and to come into, um, into greater. But I do feel, again, this is about illumination of masculine energy for most of you. All right, so let's clarify the Nine of Swords. Clarify the Nine of Swords. Something that has to do with work. Being in one side about something that has to do with work. And I feel with the connection of the choices, not necessarily making a choice that was of integrity. And with the overall swords energy, um, Gemini, Libra, Aquarius, double Libra coming through, that speaking to even more of the shadow work. So that could apply here to a lot of the masculine energy. And this is not gender specific, I should mention that. So you could be a female that's resonating more with the masculine energy and experiencing this personally and giving your story and... Um, Showing that in this reading here, the eight energy is present here. And if you remember me saying that overall breakdown of the seven, the eight energy being in between this, eighth house Scorpio energy coming through, the secrets I'm feeling, there was secrets about something that has to do with work. That's also tied to that sword energy there too. And having to do with communication. Pentacles energy... Earth energy, Capricorn, Taurus, and Virgo. I'm seeing this as a, a, a sword. And with the three energy, third party energy coming through. Swords having to do with truth. Ace of Swords. And not necessarily an Ace of Swords energy I'm getting. Just an overall sword. Green energy being here. That resembling the energy of Taurus but then also heart chakra energy and that self-love. So I feel the importance of self-love kind of um, not being put first when it's right there in the face of a masculine energy and the choice being made to take part in this work here. Aquarius energy coming through here. So we do have that alignment here with the swords energy and the air energy. And then I'm seeing this as a necklace that could be significant. Four pentacles here, four pentacles here. So I'm getting um, almost like soulmate energy, but it being something that has to do with business or work and that being the reason there's four pentacles here and four pentacles here and not necessarily um, a six of pentacles or a six of cups, six energy coming through here. But an abundant energy coming through, that good fortune energy with the darkness, maybe that darkness connected to this here too as well in that way. Also the eighth house energy of Scorpio and the lower vibrational energy that comes with this. Notice too this sword and what is connected to this. I feel that this energy of some kind of support here with the way that it looks and how it's supporting this. Um, I'm getting that this four pinnacles here, if these weren't here, this maybe would waver and not be the way that it is here. So being in that, in the face of these, I'm getting this being one energy here, one energy here. Being in the face of these energies here, but being supported on almost like an obligation Also not really being focused on either. 
and not being very supported is what I was getting from this um, piece of white here that's supporting this energy here. Where if these energies were to fall away, this would teeter-totter, waver. So that may be relevant for some of you. There could be anxiety about um, with a connection to work, something that's taken place where a tower moment has happened with some illumination having to do with work and not being able to sleep at night because of it. Let's clarify the Knight of Wands. I'm gonna move this up here. We'll move this over. Clarify the Knight of Wands. Oh goodness, that's quite a bit that wanted to come out. We're gonna take all of that. I'm seeing the lovers. We have that right on top here. And we do have third party energy that's here coming underneath the Knight of Wands, but it fell or was placed on top. All the energy is over here in this way. And you can see here, we do have, um, we have the, the card of the emperor and we have a queen of swords. And I'm not getting that reversal energy at all. Not at all. What do we have? Yep. The uncovering <laughs> right here with the moon card that I was totally getting with this not even being about future here. I feel that this, again, is the in exposure here of someone you've been connected to and the uncovering of something that was attempted to be kept secret. But this being a part of a cycle, this being a part of a journey to help whoever and all who are involved to have some reflection on this experience and to be able to start anew and have a rebirth here and build, coming through this energy, working through this and healing from this, seeing the choices we have made as we move forward, moving away from the choices that we made that got us here in the first place, to build on solid foundation. And I feel Knight of Wands energy is not something, it's being connected to this so this energy of a Knight of Wands is um, not preferable, but again, illumination of an uncovering, some secrets that were being with, uh, withheld here by Knight of Wands energy. Ten of Swords. Here's that completion of that Nine of Swords there. And I feel that with the Nine of Swords energy that this Knight of, Knight of Wands is feeling, that Ace of Sword energy that I mentioned that I felt had nothing to do with this. I feel it's like a, a replica, an imitation almost, but being third party there too. So having toxicity tied to it and not being in that pure state, working through this to come into a, a more pure state here. That Ten of Swords ending here overall. I feel that Ace of Swords being a part of this Nine of Swords, the truth. The Sword of Truth, completing this Nine of Swords to bring about this Ten of Swords. This being a part of the secrets here too as well. Something very painful, a very painful situation here where one is feeling betrayed, backstabbed, lied to, hurt. Having a knowing, the energy here with the Eye of Horus here, having a knowing, that third eye energy coming through. This 10 breaking down to a 1, so there's new beginning with the 18 here in the moon card. The moon being the ruler of Cancerian energy. Cancer being 4th house energy. 9 energy also connecting back to the 9 energy here. But then ninth house energy of spirituality. Helping all involved here to come greater to relate with oneself and to heal oneself. To recognize the wounds and the healing possibly from childhood, you know? But I feel that the feminine energy connected to this masculine, again, is, is a part of this knowing here. Experiencing a Ten of Swords, having a knowing, 
But being able to take good care of oneself, going through a mirroring energy with the masculine energy here. We have sun and moon energy here, eclipse energy. We just went through a eclipse energy with the past full moon that we just had. That lover's energy that was being picked up on with the six energy, that coming through and confirming underneath the knight of wands here. Third party energy present. The white hat being significant there. We have black and white energy. That little piece of white, that almost looks like, um, I'm getting, I'm hearing Scorpio energy. That being a part of this here. And so um, I'm not getting this being about a choice. I feel that it's about a choice that was made um, that may have to do something with, um, you know, what others may be manifesting with um, not the greatest intention. But then also, too, um, with this being connected to the Ten of Swords, some um, cheating and part of that lying, the untruths there in the Nine of Swords. We have the Emperor energy. And then the Queen of Swords energy. So with the Emperor, I mean, it was in reverse. I do feel that's kind of with that alignment underneath the Knight of Wands, kind of speaking to the immaturity of an emperor who made the choices to be on a lower vibration end of their fire energy rather than the upside. Where this energy looking forward is that forward energy is more about positivity and um, initiating an action. Also abundance here with the stance that's present here. And the four being upside down, that I feel is about instability from the in and out energy from the Knight of Wands. With the Queen of Swords, I do feel that um, the choice that was made by this Knight of Wands turned out to be a Queen of Swords energy. Where I feel on the upside of this, this is more that feminine energy that is cutting off this energy, having a knowing about what's taking place. And that being part of that energy of this Nine of Wands here for this masculine energy after the tower coming in and the action of a queen of swords i feel by the feminine energy this masculine's connected to having chosen a queen of swords in reverse here so this not being a great energy of a connection here when it comes to a third party type situation This is air energy, Aries energy, Gemini energy, more air energy, and then um, Cancerian energy with the moon, being the ruler of Cancer. Also Pisces energy. But I'm getting more Cancerian energy. That's a lot, this is also five energy. So that could be significant. Fives are also about change and significant change coming through. That being evident here with what's taking place for a Knight of Wands here. All right, so let's get to your Major Arcana. I'm hearing <laughs> some of you want me to do the next card after the Knight of Wands. It's a going within energy here in the Hermit energy, but also about that exposure that's coming after the Knight of Wands, the light being shined, that being evident with the clarifying card here under the tower. This all being brought to light here with some enlightenment going within for oneself. I feel that's a part of that Taurus energy you're being asked to use to continue to provide yourself with the comforts. If you're a feminine energy, as this masculine energy is going through this, but I do feel this is feminine energy that with the going within and sitting pretty in the Empress energy is just magnifying your glow and your glow bringing light to who it is that you're connected to 
That is a Knight of Wands behavior type here. Virgo energy, six house energy here too as well with that six energy in the lovers, transmuting that energy of third party situations and using it to your benefit to help your shine. All right, let's get your major arcana. And this totally makes sense with <laughs> the title that I channeled for you just a few days ago. Aries Moon. You got a couple cards here. And they're both in reverse. Um, let's see if we're filling. We have the wheel and we have strength. So I'm not getting the reversals. I feel those just came out um, in that way to be able to come out together and look, it's 10 and 11 together. And the strength card has been coming out by itself in the past few readings. Um, so I think this is pretty impressive and amazing to speak to the progression that is taking place for you from the change that's taking place and the significance of the greater that's coming in due to a lot of pain and heartache but situations that were built on unstable foundation now being corrected and assisted by the universe here. I feel also with that light that you have put into yourself, the increasing of your Aries moonlight. Um, also, you know, using the Pisces moon energy of expansion and that shadow energy of the Virgo energy that's coming through here in the Hermit, another nine energy. So great completions and endings coming through here that are definitely painful, but the um, truth coming out so that what was continuing to be built on is no longer because it's not, it's going to be built even higher and higher. But um, I feel with that height, it's, it's going to be a harder fall. So universe coming in before anything goes even further to bring this down so that you can begin to build on stable foundation the support coming through strong for the masculine here, where I feel the feminine has recently experienced this, but mirroring that energy, being prepared, and um, on, a, on a, a certain level to where how they're handling this, how feminine energy is handling this is um, proactive here. So getting back to your major arcana, and the sun is setting here. We have the wheel, which is a card of 10, that breaking down to a one. I feel that's tied to that 10 of swords that's present here. And the ending of a cycle, energy's leaving. The burden, I'm seeing this as a burden with the purity that's coming through. That just speaking to the amount that what you have to go through is not in vain. And that it's all for your greatest good. But that wheel is shifting, and I feel that as it's shifting, these energies are going to become even more lighter. And also, energies, certain energies moving away from you. And the energies that are wanting to remain with you are going to stay with you. You having to trust this overall. There's blindfold energy in the center here. And I feel that center is also connected to the heart space. Heart space energy being here where something is a part of your past, but I feel with that wheel shifting, it's going to end up particularly in the crown area where you'll be able to connect and receive that download. So as you continue to do the self-work from within, shifting this wheel, that placement of what's meant for you is always going to be there to help you to bring in whatever download your higher self is giving you here. That being a part of the change, I feel not just outside of you, but within you there too as well, where this will be more constant for you. You having a greater knowing and strengthened spirituality, more heightened spirituality, and that also tying to the energy of the strength card here. Being a card of 11, um, this is 10th house energy of Capricorn here too. Capricorn energy is also on that devil card and the part of that shadow work and the polarity energy of the lover's energy. 11th house energy being Aquarius energy. So standing up for the truth that's within yourself and removing any toxicities that totally being tied with the wheel here. Overall, we do have the energy of 21, the card of 21 in the major arcana being the world card, which is the very last card of the major arcana. 
and the speaking to um, overall ending of a major karmic cycle. So that message and that sign coming through here for you too as well as we have this reading present here. That being for both the feminine and the masculine energy. I feel this is more for the feminine energy, seeing the feminine in the middle of this wheel. And then this, I feel with the balance overall within oneself for both feminine and masculine energy. But then we do have the masculine energy here. And that could be a message for the feminine energy that is connected to the masculine here that is being exposed, uncovered for the lower vibrational behavior. And justice energy coming through here too as well. Leo energy present here with the lion. And the energy of truth being very important here, but also Aquarius energy and Pisces energy. There's a lot of blue. Blue also being tied to the throat chakra and that being a part of communication and the importance of being in truth and telling the truth and having integrity. There's an increasement here and there's a process that's taking place here. But we do have the overall ending of a cycle and that Queen of Swords energy present there too as well. So I would say as you continue to move forward, coming from this enlightenment and um, doing what's best for you, you, this is helping you to use your intuition and the Cancerian energy that came through as well with the fourth house, the importance of that security and that self-love and to also surrender this energy. I feel that a lot of you have with what's coming over here on the side, but surrendering this to the universe and allowing this to work its way in the way that is um, best for everybody that's involved. Trusting that what you're doing is um, listening to yourself and that being the best thing for you. Following your intuition and listening to your heart. And then also to, with that surrendering, sending love to it is that you're connecting to. Whether this be you as the masculine or the feminine and having that forgiveness for yourself, realizing that this was all pre-designed to be able to come into our greatest selves, living our best lives. So I'm gonna leave this here, Aries Moons. This was your reading. We have the magician. I feel that being a part of what is um, being asked of you with that strength energy and the one energy, um, your one energy coming through strongly there. But the magician energy, this is the card of magician and Gemini energy, transmuting the energy that you've been dealing with, utilizing your magician energy there. Oh, look at there. We have the world card here on the bottom of the deck here for the major arcana. So that message coming through two times here, double confirmation of, of a major ending here of a karmic cycle and trust that whatever came from this in a positive way is going to continue to come through for you just in a way that's even more beneficial for you and less toxic. Three and three um, energy coming through with the 21 and the two and the one and the three, the importance of that three and the Empress energy and also masculine, feminine and divine energy connection and the importance of staying on the upside of three energy and collaborating, being strong in your Empress energy and seeing that through. And then on the bottom here, we have the 10 of wands. This was in reverse. I feel this is also speaking to the completions of a major cycle here, major karmic cycle here. Not just with, I mean, the impact of these two energies of 21 coming through very strongly here. That also tied to the Virgo energy with the 33. That's been resonating pretty heavily for Virgo energy and Virgo moons. But you have another 10 here breaking down to a one. And this being in reverse, I feel this is over. The burdens are no longer yours to bear as you're sitting pretty, these feminine energies coming through. But then also too, for you masculines, the ending of the burdens that you've been bearing 
having withheld information or having some untruth in this uncovering. This being released with the enlightenment and the sun energy and the overall completion of a major cycle here. So with that completion of the cycle, everybody is moving into new. All for the better. Again, Aries Moons, this was your reading. I hope that these messages were helpful, enlightening, and empowering for you. Continue to do what's best for you, both feminine and masculine energies. Again, this is all predestined and predesigned for us to come into greater awareness, spirituality, self-love, and in doing that for ourselves, we're helping the collective overall. So keep doing what's best for you, staying true to yourself, loving others, and having forgiveness. I thank you all for your continued love and support. Welcome to all new subscribers, and I wish you all the very best. Until we meet again, take great care. I love you. Peace.